Hi dear children welcome you all this is Yakshia ma'am today i have come up with a new lesson that is i know you all will be very much excited and eager to listen to another story so this is your second lesson we'll see which okay and do not forget to subscribe to this channel to get the notification of other videos that gets uploaded children this is 8th standard first language english class as i told you in the beginning this is the second lesson of your english textbook the lesson name is the boy who sold wisdom so now i want you all to eagerly sit and listen to this story children i told you this is your second lesson the boy who sold wisdom i know you are very much eagerly sitting now as i asked you to sit so now you should first know what is the meaning of wisdom before going with the explanation so what is wisdom see children when you were a toddler you were not knowing how to speak how to convey your your thoughts as in as days passed on you started to know how to speak how to ask someone for something and how to communicate with your neighborhood how to make friends and when some situation comes you will recall the situation same situation that happened before and then you will react accordingly yes or no how did all this happen now you are a teenager now to this age you have learned many things how did you learn it through your experience so you have gained some knowledge through your experience so that is called as wisdom experience and the knowledge is called as wisdom miss then the boy who sold wisdom means is the boy selling his knowledge or is the boy selling his experience what he has learned from his previous uh, um days is it so miss yes children he is selling the same but how can he sell miss can he sell those things for money children yes here he is selling it for money how is it giving him some money is it filling his stomach let's see okay now after i told you that the boy is selling the wisdom for money now you all are more eager i know before that the characters i have mentioned here there is a boy named nagendra and an other boy named babu babu is the son of a rich merchant called gupta and we have a king of that particular city we have queens the king has two queens and then each queen has maid so one queen has a maid the other queen queen also has a maid so we have two queen and two maids we have a minister of that particular court where the king is ruling and a doctor now we'll see how they all get related in this lesson coming to the explanation of the lesson the boy who sold wisdom here is the first paragraph given to you all in this particular slide let's see what it says nagendra was orphaned and found himself without a job here the boy named nagendra had no parents and he was also not having any job he was a very clever boy but and he had learned many things by observing his father when his father was alive he observed him and he learned many things from his father one day he had a brilliant idea now that he didn't have any job and he has to earn for his living so he gets a very good idea in his mind what was it he went into town and hired the smallest and the cheapest place he could find and set up a shop so what he does he had very little amount in his hand so he went into the town and he will hire hire us to obtain for a temporary use of a particular shop on an agreement agreed payment say example pay 500 rupees per month is what he might have agreed to a small and the cheapest shop he wanted because he didn't have much amount in his hand he spent a few nickel coins he had on paper ink and a pen so what he does he was left with only few nickel coins in his hand what is this nickel according to northern america uh, we call a nickel as 5 cent coin 5 cent coin let's not dig too much our head on what this nickel is all about let's just assume it to be he had little coins in his hand those little coins he will spend on paper ink and pen that's all now he has a shop he has a pen he has ink and he has some papers 
Over his shop, he put a placard that said wisdom for sale. So on a piece of paper, you just see children, when you all have environmental day, you go for procession. While going on a procession, you will hold a, a board kind of a thing or a banner kind of a thing uh, on which the motto or a slogan of that particular day will be written and you will start um, uh, reading out those words. Yes or no? You will uh, shout out those words. In the same way, this person will have a placard written on, wi on which it was written, Wisdom is for sale. All around his him were merchants who had large shops. He had only, he is the one who had a small shop. All other merchants, merchants are people who are selling something. That means people who are on trade. So, those people were having large shops. What were they selling in their large shops? They sold clothes, jewelry, fruits, vegetables and things that people bought every day. Every day, whatever that is necessary for people, they were selling those things. Nagendra called out all kinds of wisdom for sale, reasonable prices. So, this Nagendra, after opening that shop, he had this placard written in, the, in his shop. Now, he will start uh, calling out people saying all kind of wisdoms are for sale and it is for reasonable prices also. Now what happens? People will all crowd near his place. The people who had come to buy things could not see anything in his shop but could only hear the words he was shouting. As you all know, it was a shop with only paper, pen and an ink. Now he didn't have anything in his shop. Those who had come to buy something couldn't see anything except he shouting standing there. They crowded around and laughed at him. Obviously, if there is nothing, he is simply shouting. They will start laughing at him. No one bought even a piece of wisdom from him. Obviously, nobody will buy. Just they will stand and smile, I mean, laugh at his words. But he was patient. He did not lose his patience. He was patient enough so that he had that kind of a patience that one day or just next moment, somebody will come asking, what exactly are you going to give? What is this wisdom all about? Somebody may come. Is the hope that he had in his mind and heart. Let's see what happens next. Will anybody come? Will they buy wisdom? What happens next? Let's see. One day, Babu, a rich merchant's son, happened to pass by and heard the wisdom seller hawking his wares. Wisdom. Wisdom of all kinds. He was a stupid boy. He didn't know what was really being sold. He thought it was a vegetable or a thing that he could hold in his hand. So, he asked Nagendra what it would cost per kg. Nagendra said, I do not sell wisdom by weight. I sell it by quality. So, what happened was, Babu was the name of a merchant's son. He was passing by the street of the market and he saw Nagendra selling his Wares. What is this hawking his wares means? That is selling his goods in a noisily manner in a street. So he was hawking his wares. Wares means here his articles or paper on which he had written something. The written lines he was noisily screaming in the streets. What he was telling? Wisdom. Wisdom of all kind is for sale. But this fellow Babu was a very stupid boy. He didn't know what is the meaning of wisdom. He thought it is some vegetable or something that he can hold in his hand and take it home. So he will come and ask Nagendra, what will the cost of 1 kg wisdom is? So Nagendra says, no, no, I don't sell wisdom for weight. I only sell wisdom for quality. Obviously, can knowledge be given for weight? No, it can only be in terms of quality. Third paragraph. Babu put down a nickel and asked Nagendra to give him a nickel's worth of wisdom. The, Bob, the boy took out a piece of paper and wrote on it, It is not wise to stand and watch two people fighting. And he asked Babu to keep it tight in his turban cloth. So Babu, what he does, he will put a uh, nickel of coin on the table. So ba Nagendra will take a piece of paper and in that piece of paper he will write, it is not wise to stand when two people are, watch when two people are fighting. After writing that, he will fold that paper and he will ask Babu to tie up in a turban cloth and to take it home. What is this turban? A long dupatta kind of a thing in Rajasthan. You can see um, uh, men covering their head just like a cap. Such kind of a turban cloth in which he will ask him to tie up and take it home. Fourth para. 
Babu went home and showed his father what he had bought. He said, I bought some wisdom for a nickel and I have it here tied up inside the turban cloth. The father untied the knot, looked at the scrap of paper and read what was written on it. It, wa it is not wise to stand and watch two people fighting. So Babu goes home and he will tell his father that I have bought a nickel worth of wisdom and it is tied in this turban cloth. After telling that, Babu's father opens up the turban cloth and he will read there was a scrap of paper in which it was written, it is not wise to stand and watch two people fighting. What happens to Babu's father now? Fifth para, he was furious. He screamed at his son, you fool. Paying a nickel for this nonsense, everyone knows you should not stand and watch two people fighting. Then he went to the marketplace and stormed into Nagendra's shop and scolded him soundly. Till here I'll explain. So he was very furious. He was in a extreme angry. So he goes to um, Nagendra's shop. He first screams at his son saying, everybody knows that you should not stand when two people are fighting. This everybody knows you are a foolish person, he says and he will just like a storm, he gives enter to Nagendra's shop. Then what happened? He will very badly scold Nagendra. You scoundrel, you have cheated my son. He is a fool and you are a cheat. He says, he is a foolish boy and you are cheated. You have cheated him. Return the nickel or, or else I will call the police. He says, return the nickel or else I will call the police. Nagendra said, if you don't want my goods, you can return it. Give me back my wisdom and you can have your money back. So he says, anyways, if you don't like the goods which I have given to you, you can return it back and I will give back the money which your son has paid me. Gupta, the merchant, threw the scrap of paper at the boy and said, There, now give, my, give me back my money. He will return that scrap of paper in which he had written the wisdom and he will say, See there, I have given you, my, given you the scrap of paper. Now you give me the nickel of coin, he says. Nagendra said, No, you have not given me back my wisdom. You have only written the paper. Yes or no, children? He has only written the paper. The wisdom he now knows that he is not supposed to go and stand in. Watch two people fighting. Now you have not written me the wisdom you have just given me the paper if you want your money back you will have to sign a document saying that your son will never use my wisdom so if you want a nickel back you have to sign a document in which it is written my son will not use the wisdom that you have given to him and he should go and stand and that he will always stand and watch people fighting and he in that you also have to mention that my son will always go and watch when two people are fighting so tricky now it is the passers by supported nagendra everybody supported nagendra so gupta readily signed the document and took his money he was ready to sign the document he didn't know what the consequences might he might face he just wanted to uh, get the back uh, get back his nickel he signed it he was happy that it he, it had been easy to undo his son's foolish bargain. See children, you all know bargain means when you go to a shop, if the pen worth is 500 that they are selling, you feel like not giving them 500, you, you will start saying, uncle, give this pen for 450 rupees or 460 rupees. When the person is convinced, he will give you, give you the pen for 460 rupees. That is one type of bargain. Here the other type of bargain is nothing but an agreement between two or more people or groups as to what each will do for the other. Here the same thing happened. Nagendra was ready to give the nickel back only if Gupta, that is uh, son, uh, merchant, uh, I mean Babu's father is called Gupta here. So only if Gupta signs the document, he is ready to give back the nickel. This is the agreement. This is also called as one type of bargain. Let's go what, ha let's know what happens in the seventh para. Coming to seventh paragraph, a few days passed. The king of that land had two queens who hated each other. So did their mates. They quarreled as bitterly as their mistress. One day, each queen sent her maid to the market. The maids went to the same shop and both wanted to buy the same pumpkin. There was only one pumpkin, so they began to quarrel. So, few days passed. The, the king of that particular land had two queens. Both the queens had maid. Each mates quarreled with each other. They didn't like each other as their queens. Queens also didn't like each other. The mates also didn't like each other. One day, uh, queens sent these mates to market to buy something. Both went to the same shop where there was only one pumpkin. Both wanted the same pumpkin, but there was only one pumpkin. So they started to quarrel very bitterly in the street. 
their abuses and gestures were so fierce that the grocer fled the place so their abuses the ba bad uh, i mean they misused they very cruelly very violently they started to argue with each other and they, uh, their gestures the action of their body parts the action of their hands and their um, head were so furious uh, i mean uh, were very violent so the um, owner of that shop also fled fled away means he moved away then what happened babu who happened to be nearby remembered his father's contract with nagendra and went there to watch the quarrel now babu was in the same market he remembers the contract between his father and nagendra so he had to now go and see what is happening there so he goes there the maids fought tore each other's hair and came to blows so they they started to quarrel in such a way that they start uh, they tore each other's hair and they blow each other one of the maids noticed the merchant's son and said so now when this was happening one of the maid saw babu standing there and she will say babu you be my witness she struck me she says you be my witness because you saw that she struck me the others uh, the other cried saying you have seen with your own eyes who struck whom she says no no you have seen with your own eyes who is the one who struck whom who is the first person to struck whom you are my witness she says one say you are my witness the other say you are my witness she has hit me so many times she says she has hit me so many times then they remembered other errands and went their ways other errands means other uh, i mean errand is nothing but a short journey undertaken in order to deliver or collect something now they had to they had come there to purchase something especially for their queens so they remembered all that and they moved away keeping this fellow in their mind as a witness they moved away the two maids went to their queens and told them about the quarrel adding all sorts of colorful details they go back to the uh, uh, to the court and they will uh, complain to the queen saying what all that happened and also they added some more colorful details the queens were now furious and sent complaints to the king now they became very angry and they will complain to the king each of them sent word to babu that he was the witness on on her side now each queen will send for babu babu will come and babu says um i mean babu has supposed to be the witness for both of them if he didn't speak in support of her she would have his head chopped off so he say uh, one queen says if you don't be a witness on my side then your head will be chopped the other queen says the same thing now babu was in a panic he was completely tensed when his father heard of this he goes and tell about tell this about tell about this to his father he too was in panic he too was completely tensed finally the son said let's go and ask nagendra he has wisdom to sell so he uh, babu says let's go and talk to nagendra about this he has wisdom to sell let's see what he has to say to get me out of this scrap let me see what he says for to get me out of this particular situation so father and son went to nagendra who said he would help but he the fee would be 500 rupees he say let me help you no problem i'll help you but my fees is 500 rupees so what happens then gupta paid him the money and nagendra said gupta that is father of babu will pay the money and nagendra says when they call you to court pretend to be insane when they call you to court insane means seriously you have some mental ill behave as if you really pretend that is act as if you are mentally ill behave as if you understand nothing of what they say as if whatever they ask you you make sure you pretend in such a way that you didn't understand anything next day the king called the witness he and his minister asked babu various questions king called this person babu to the court and uh, the minister and uh, and the king started to ask various question but he wouldn't answer any of them he didn't answer as uh, nagendra had told him to behave as if he is not understanding anything he also pretended he merely babbled and uttered nonsensical syllable till the king lost his patience and drove him out of the court room so nonsensical syllable means which cannot be understood just like a just like a a ba ba something like that you can imagine he was just 
uttering some nonsensical syllable and the king was so angry on him he just he was pissed off and he threw him out of the court room babu was delighted by the success of the ruse he was so happy that he got success by the trick that he played ruse means trick that he played he told everyone about nagendra's great wisdom which soon became a buzzword in the marketplace so he after he was very much delighted by the success that he got from the trick that he played he went to the marketplace and he said everyone about this and it uh, nagendra's wisdom was a, a mouth to mouth talk to everyone in the market coming to the 10th paragraph now gupta was not pleased he he saw that his son would have to feign madness always or else the king would find out he had been tricked he would certainly chop off his son's head if he found out so back they went to nagendra for more wisdom for another 500 rupees nagendra advised them go back to king when he is in a good mood and tell him the old story he will find it amusing and will forgive you but make sure he is in a good mood of laughter and so babu followed the advice found the king in a merry mood and told him the story the king laughed a lot and forgave him so what happened gupta was in a great tension now now my son has pretended to be insane in front of the king if the king gets to know that we have played a trick with him he will surely chop my son's head if he wouldn't have accepted to be a witness to the queens the queens would have chopped my son so what to do now for life long my son has to pretend as if he is insane so now the only way for them was to go to nagendra once again nagendra asked him for 500 rupees gupta will pay 500 rupees and now nagendra gives an other wisdom saying that you go to the king when he is in a very good mood of laughter tell him the complete story he feels very amusing and he will forgive you and but make sure he is in a good mood of laughter he says so babu and gupta will follow his advice and goes to the king when he is in a good mood of laughter and they will accept the complete accept everything and he will like the story and he will forgive them after that what happened then the king who was intrigued by what he had heard of anagendra in the market sent for him and asked if he had any more wisdom to sell the boy said of course i have plenty to sell especially to a king but my fees would be a lakh a hundred thousand rupees the king paid him the hundred thousand and the boy gave him a piece of paper on which he had written think deeply before you do anything so then what happened the king who was intrigued intrigued is nothing but arose the curiosity of interest of or fascinated the king was very much curious now he had heard about him now he was also fascinated to know who he is he had heard about nagendra in the market so he sent for his ministers and others to know who he is who he is and also ask him if he has any wisdom to sell for me then nagendra says yes of course i have wisdom to sell for king but and he also says especially for a king i have wisdom to sell but my cost is costly what is the cost he says a lakh of rupee that is 100000 rupees is the cost of one wisdom that i am going to give for king king accepts it he will give the money and he will ask him to give the wisdom what was that wisdom in a sheet of paper i mean in a piece of paper he'll write think deeply before you do anything then the king was so delighted with the advice that he made it his motto he had it embroidered on his pillows and engraved on his cups and plates so that he would not forget it so what did king do he was so happy after getting the wisdom from nagendra he takes it to be his motto and he will embroider this wisdom saying think deeply before you do anything on the pillows and he will engrave engrave, engrave is nothing but cut or carve on a surface which is very hard on that on all cups plates everywhere he will engrave this particular lines so that he will not forget it then some months later after few months the king fell ill the king fell completely ill the minister and one of the queens had been conspiring to get rid of him so they wanted to get rid of the king who wanted to get rid the minister and one of the queen not both of them one of the queen so they bribed the doctor they will bribe the doctor means they will uh, they will um, go and um, i mean doctor they will go and ask the doctor 
to be in their part to be at their ease always by giving him some money okay in that way they will go and ask for the doctor to be there in their way always and they will pay him for some amount and persuaded him to poison the king's medicine they asked him to poison the king's medicine they convinced him to do this and then when the medicine was brought to the king and he lifted the golden cup to his lips he read the words engraved on it think deeply before you do anything without suspecting anything he thought about the words lowered the cup and looked at the medicine in it what happened the king was given in a cup of uh, glass in a cup uh, the king was given medicine to drink but the king once he lifted the cup up he could read think deeply before you do anything was carved it on it when he read those lines he didn't have any he didn't suspect anything he just thought of it he just gave some time to think about it that's all he didn't suspect anything he don't know what has really happened behind but what happened here was the doctor who was watching all this felt nervous he he did the guilt there he, he is the one who has done something wrong there so his guilty consciousness will always alarm to him see you have done something that is why he, that is why the king is seeing it very deeply he is looking at the medicine means he came to know about whatever that you have done is what running in his mind his guilty conscience made him believe that the king had guessed that his medicine had been poisoned he started to feel that the king has already guessed that the medicine is poisoned while the king was thinking the doctor threw himself to his feet and confessed to everything and prayed to be forgiven he is just thinking he has nothing in his mind that the medicine is poisoned but the guilty conscience that is in the doctor made him accept his fault and he will fall to his knees and he will tell the complete story and he will ask him to forgive but the king ordered that the doctor must be arrested the king orders everyone that the doctor must be arrested then he sent for minister and the queen and insisted that they drink the poison in his cup uh, when the uh, doctor fell on uh, king's a uh, foot and he accepted and he told the story he also told the story about who made him do this so the king came to know that the minister and one of the queen is doing this so he will ask the minister and the queen to drink the cup of poison that is there they too fell on his feet and begged for mercy they will ask him to forgive them he ordered them to be hanged and he banished the doctor from his kingdom he ordered them to be hanged the queen and the minister to be hanged and he will banish that is to send somebody out of the country as a punishment he will completely punish him throwing him out of that particular country or his court or his place where he is ruling and he made nagendra his minister and hoarded him with wealth with all the luxury he, he gave all the luxury to uh, nagendra that he was desiring and he made nagendra as his minister i hope you all understood the lesson and it was a very good uh, story i enjoyed it thoroughly i hope you also enjoyed it thoroughly coming to the assignments glossary answer in a sentence each and reference to context is given uh, the meanings were already given to the right of every slide i want you to put them here and, uh, and go through the meanings every day answer in a sentence each they are very small you can write them it is easy reference to contacts this particular line think deeply before you do anything uh, to whom was it asked to think deeply and what um, who gave that piece of wisdom and why did he give him and how did that particular wisdom help the receiver you are supposed to write them in your own words thank you children go through the lessons thoroughly i hope you all understood it Stay healthy, stay safe and keep learning.